Hello, this is Mike from MF Woodshop. Today I'm going to do a little bit of work on the Jet 16 inch bandsaw. Uh, picked this up from a co worker of mine. Uh, wasn't really ready for a bandsaw in my shop, or at least a bandsaw of this size, uh, but I could not pass up the price. It was only $200 and uh, it's a pretty stout uh, bandsaw. Um, two problems I'm having with it right now is it needs to be on casters and I picked up some heavy duty 4 inch casters which I don't mind the 4 inch because I actually prefer it up a little bit and this will help with that. Um, I got two of them that are locking wheels and two of them that are straight wheels. And these are rated for 250 pounds each which is way more than enough for this saw. Uh, the book says shipping weight on this is 300 pounds so that should be way more than enough to handle this saw. Uh, the only problem is I gotta drill through the metal feet to put the bolts in. Which I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, it's just time consuming more than anything. That leads me to the second problem I got. Um, the only 123 inch blade I could buy from Woodcraft when I went to go buy one is a quarter inch blade. Which, you know, I think you need one in the shop for those little projects every now and then, but uh, for the most part this this bandsaw needs a bigger blade. Uh, at least a one inch blade for sure. Uh, I think if I remember right it'll take up to an inch and a quarter inch blade uh, width wise. Um, I'll have to double check on that, but uh, it's from the factory that comes with a one inch blade, six TPI tooth, uh, so I would like something in that in that realm of blades, you know, at least a one inch, uh, four to six TPI tooth uh, to leave in here for the most part. I do have my eyes on a uh, Laguna carbide tip blade. Uh, they're a little expensive. They're about 150, 170 bucks somewhere in there. So it may be a while before I actually get uh, the blade that I want in here. Um, it's a little little out of my price range right now so uh, but anyway we're going to uh, take a look at the uh, jet 16 inch bandsaw today so stay tuned You know, sometimes when you're working, you have a set idea how to do something. When you actually get in there and do it, it don't work that way. Uh, I'm sure it's happened to you guys and it's happening to me now. Um, my original thought was to actually lay this down on its back side, drill the holes from the bottom, put the casters on, lift it back up. The problem I got is this bandsaw is freaking heavy. <laughs> Um, like I said before, uh, the shipping weight is 300 pounds, so that's, uh, that's pretty heavy. 
So it's just too unawkward to do that. So when I was getting ready to put it down on its back, I realized that I could just tip it up this way and, you know, do one side. And then why, when I got those sides done, I can, you know, flip it the other way. Well, I started looking after I got these two pretty much done. I got the holes done. I need to mount the wheels, but well, if I do that, now I'm going to have wheels on it and it's just going to slide. It's not going to have any friction like it does here. So while I was drilling the last hole on this one, I noticed these bolts right up here. And those bolts hold these feet on. So I did a whole lot of extra work that I didn't need to do. I could have taken the feet off, drilled my holes, put the feet back on, and been done. So I think what I'm going to do now is continue mounting the swivel wheels on this side and put some 2x4s down this way, lift that side off the ground when I tip it back, and then uh, take those that side of the feet off drill my holes, put it back on, and I'm done. From the ground up, it's just over 75 inches. So the height, height of the tabletop is fine for me. What is not fine for me, and what I forgot to take into account, where I want to put this or store this, is over here under the wall. When I put the cabinets up uh, over three years ago, I dished out this little section of the cabinet so I could have a big bandsaw and a big drill press. But now what I'm afraid of is from ground to the top of my cabinet, or the bottom of my cabinet, is 72 and a half inches. So I'm uh, two and a half inches short. <laughs> And someday I'll learn how to fold these things. Now these are the upper guides for the uh, for the blade, and I'm not a I'm not a fan. I don't like them. Um, I don't know if I don't like them because 
I don't really know anything about them or don't like them because it appears that they suck. Give that a shot. I'll do the same thing on the bottom, then we'll uh, make it a little test cut, see what happens. Okay, I don't do this too often, but, you know, when I have to bitch about something, I'm going to bitch about it. It's not too often that you're going to ever hear me bitch about something, but, damn it, this is stupid. Alright, so this is the lower blade guard, or the lower blade guide assembly. So first of all, it went in underneath like this. Had this old blade guard right here. And you know, it has these two little thumb things to adjust these European guides. And then you uh, you adjust them and you do these thumb guards. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy. First of all, there's, there's no need for this damn thing. Uh, what I was running into is, since these things mount together, and they're independent of each other, uh, if you don't get this perfectly square and this perfectly square together, the blade hits the damn guard. So, I don't need that damn thing. Um, I, I'm sure the company put it on there because some dumbass put their hand way up under here and cut their finger off. But you know if you if you're gonna do that you don't need a bandsaw so that's problem number one that stupid thing and then problem number two was there's a a bolt that goes into this housing right here that mounts it to the bottom of the cabinet which would be fine but there's no way to get to that damn bolt now i'm sure when you bought this machine it probably came with a special allen wrench and uh, hell, I don't even know where it went. I had to go down to actually buy one because I didn't have one. Here it is. So, I like using these Allen wrenches. They're real long. They're accurate. The top part of it has kind of a swivel, so if you have to get it in there at an angle, it, it, they work really well. So, I like using those. But I had to go down and get a regular 5mm Allen wrench and uh, to even get the Allen wrench into this little tight spot and you can only turn that bolt like a quarter turn before you're hitting the uh, adjuster for the tilt mechanism or whatnot. So that pissed me off. Um, so I mean if you have to change blades on this all the time, if you was in a production shop and if you bought this machine, you would quickly realize to get rid of this machine because a blade sucks to change. Uh, I, I suppose if you set one blade up and leave it there all the time, it, it's probably fine. But, you know, I know I'm going to have to go back and change this blade because it's a quarter inch blade and it's not going to work for everything I want it to do. So I know I'm going to have to go through this whole thing again. So I got rid of that stupid blade guard. I'm getting ready to put this assembly back in. Oh, these European hinges, because they're not ball bearings like they should be. Imagine that this table is up underneath the table, which you only have about, you know, that much clearance under there anyway. So you got to get these, uh, bushings just right on the back side of that blade without hitting the teeth because they're not ball bearings they won't roll um, so you got to get them just right and square then once you do that you can you know tighten your thumb screws down and hopefully nothing moves and then bring your thrust bearing in the back and hopefully nothing moves the assembly after that and then tighten this little last thumb screw I think this whole assembly could be better. I did come up with something to at least make a life a little easier under there, and it's not much. So I took a little dowel rod, glued a magnet to it. I could put it on the back side of this side so I can adjust it this way and have some sort of adjustment. And then I can tighten it down once I get it in place. Uh, it's not much, but you know, at least make the life a little easier down there. 
So I loosen all this stuff back up. I'll put it back underneath. I'll get a magnet for this Allen wrench and just put it somewhere on the machine so I don't lose it. And hopefully I don't have to do this too often. Okay, so I think I got everything situated. I got it all put back together. Um, I went ahead and cleaned the tabletop and dry lubed the tabletop, so it should be good to go. Um, I got a quarter inch blade. It is a 6 TPI quarter inch blade, 123 inches long. Um, like I said, that's not the right blade I want in here at all times, but it's the only thing I can get my hands on. Uh, at least at a reasonable reasonable price and a reasonable time frame. So I just drew out a little fat little Christmas tree here. I'm going to cut this out on, uh, I think this is MDF or, uh, yeah, MDF I think. And uh, let's see how this thing cuts. Alright, I don't know if I would call this an overview or a review for this bandsaw, but uh, this is just something I needed to get uh, done and that's what I needed to do. So uh, that's what I chose to do today. Uh, I got the casters on the bandsaw. I can move it around quite easily and uh, they lock in place pretty well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, got a new blade on there, although I'll have to do it again when I get a bigger blade. Again, it's just not in my budget right now, and uh, someday I'll get one and have the proper blade in this thing. So for now, I guess that's it. Uh, for the money that I paid for it, I'm very pleased with it. Um, if I would have went out and bought a brand new one, I don't know if I would have picked this model. Um, mostly because of the European guides. I would much rather have ball bearing guides on there. And I know you can upgrade them, but again, that's another $120 for the top and $120 for the bottom. And then uh, the blade that I actually really want for this is about $150. So that's, uh, that is uh, something I can't do all at once. So uh, maybe over time I'll get, uh, get this to exactly the way I want it and we'll go from there. So until next time, I'll see you later.